Texas Local Live. I'm Jake Chris, and I'm Ben Martinek. And tonight we got Mr. Tyler Rogers here in the house. How's it going, Tyler? Good, man. Thanks for coming in, man. Thank you. So, welcome to the show. We'd like to uh, hang out. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I got this hat in Colorado last year. Start of Colorado. Uh, I think I was in Breckenridge when we got this when I bought this hat, and it had like this. It was a first store, and um, we spent like 45 minutes just walking around, just like. Rubbing all like the <laughs> in this place. So I was like basically ball. looking for anything that I had enough money to buy. <laughs> and there, that was it. Were you doing up there? You playing a gig? Or um, actually, we were on. I was on a uh, vacation for for that. Um, uh, we were just hanging out and, and meeting up with some uh, one of my buddies, Bob. Shout out to Bobby, who uh, he actually lives in Breckenridge and he does nice. guided horse tours during the summer and stuff. And then he's a uh, he's up on the mountain uh, for the winter months. Sweet. Or that's cool. Yeah, we need to use steamboat, man. You need to be playing under the tent. And I, I got, I got the went to steamboat last year for the first time just to check it out. Yeah. And we had, I definitely had an awesome time. Yeah, I'd love to go back for sure. Yeah. It'd be nice not to have to pay to go back. Too. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's the game, <laughs> right? That's the name of the game, man. So Tyler Rogers Band. Uh, I mean, tell us. I guess start off with the, the people that don't know you yet. If you don't know them, check them out. Tyler Rogers. Uh, Todd Rogers Band, all the social media stuff, we can plug that later, but I mean, give us a little insight into the band, what you guys are about, and how y'all made it, you know, met up and hooked up. Uh, yeah, so like, I guess this formation of uh, the Todd Rogers Band, we've been together for like five years, I want to say, between five and six years, and we got together um, after I moved back from Lubbock, uh, going to school out at Texas Tech, and uh, I had a real job for a little while. <laughs> And then I started recording an album um, this is before I had the band put together or whatnot. And then once the album came out uh, and I kind of committed to that, I wound up you know, meeting um, my drummer and my bass player through my sister, uh, one of her friends, they're her brothers. And uh, so they kind of were a three piece for a little bit, trying really just to figure things out like super green. I think RJ played like a little digital drum kit <laughs> yeah. for a little bit like we did the cajon three-piece stuff uh cool sounds we were just trying to like figure out a way to be entertaining i guess and we did that for probably like a year and then we wound up meeting uh my guitar player tiago uh, at a bar and i was playing an acoustic game he walked up and he was like he was wearing a uh, leather jacket and he had a gauge to use you know tiago mm -hmm. and he walks up with his other buddy who's got Big gauge years and wearing a backwards hat. And it's like, and actually, me and Kyle Brooks were playing this game. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and they walk up, and it was the end of our set, and it was one of those like four hour sets, so we were like, not, we were happy for it to be over, and it had been a long night. <laughs> and they're like, hey, can we play a couple songs? And we were like, yeah, yeah cool with that. <laughs> and we kind of give them our stuff, and like, walk over there, me and Kyle are just like looking at them, like, what do you think these guys are going to play? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's get it uh, fast. <laughs> Blink-182, or like, what are we going to hear? It's a risk you're willing to take. Whatever, but they played Wagon Wheel. Ah, nice. So, I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure I laughed out loud at that. But uh, even though they you know, committed a, a sin by doing that or whatever, we still <laughs> talked to him afterwards and hung out. And then Tiago told us about some other band he was in, and he invited us out to this keg -a -ween party. It's a, it's a big uh, mm -hmm. Halloween keg party or whatever. And so, anyways, through that, we wound up kind of playing with him. And, and actually, the first time we went to go practice with Tiago, we show up, we open the door, and this guy answers, looks exactly like Tiago. So we start carrying our stuff in. Hey, man, uh -huh. sweet, thanks for having us over. Can't believe we're going to jam. It's going to be great. And the guy just goes, Why are you here? Yeah, well, Tiago had an identical twin brother, Diogo. <laughs> right? But. He, he, you know, I guess it slipped his mind. It didn't to tell you, yeah. yeah it didn't Someone tell him it looks exactly like me. My name and, but, and of course, he didn't tell his brother we were coming over either. <laughs> so, like, uh, he's just like, yes. what are you, Dear was like, whoa, what's going on with you guys? And we're like, bro, we've been talking to you for like the past week. Yeah. You knew we were coming over, right? And then Tiago was like around the corner and he's like, hey, I'm like, dude, <laughs> come on. A heads up on something would be nice. Yeah, anything, really. That's a bum, man. So, yeah, I guess that was like I said, five, five, six years ago. And uh, so, yeah, we played around for like a year on that other album. And then we went in the studio, recorded um, uh, our last album, which was called uh, The Other Side. Mm -hmm. And so we all played on that, um, recorded that with um, Dustin Hendricks. 
uh, I think. Yeah, he's, awesome. yeah, we did some recording with him, yeah. And, um, and that went pretty well. It was a great learning experience. And then we just kind of, we wrapped on our, our, our this next album um, a few months back, tracking wise, and we've just been getting it all ready, and it's going to be out this month. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking forward to that too, man. Yeah. So, I may be a little biased. I've known Tyler for a little while now. Uh, back in the day, high school days, man. Way back when. Yeah, man. A little while. We've known each other for like, for like years and years and years, like a decade probably. Yeah, we're over here. Went to McKinney. McKinney, yeah, we're McKinney boys, and you, you know, know Benny Boy was a uh, he's a quarterback. Oh yeah, let's bring that up. Let's bring, yeah, yeah, super <laughs> on the billboard. I had a huge yard in my my yard sign in the front. It was crazy cool. You were a quarterback. <laughs> Football <laughs> four mile over the mountains over there. Anyway, back to my history. So, <laughs> playing tunes, kicking around, man. Um, you guys are super busy all the time. It looks like from social media's perspective, and again, knowing you, a little bias in that. Um, I always like to ask, and we have done it since we've been doing this here. I like to get perspective of the artists, like in the scene. So it's obviously Texas music. What, you know, your opinion, the scene out there in, in the Texas scene, like what do you feel, what's it like, I mean, how do you guys, have you found success, and maybe some some tips on, you know, people finding success too, just out of learning. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'll start by saying, like, I didn't even know that the Texas scene really existed in, in when we were in high school, mm -hmm. uh, which, I mean, it, it did. It not, did, yeah. Not in its current form by any no. means, but uh, it wasn't really until I went to Lubbock, which is yeah. just a town that's engrossed with... Yeah. With all that, I mean, the blue light is arguably the like homing beacon. Yeah. You know, like people will literally, uh, you know, they go to Texas Tech just so that they can try. Yeah, the island of yeah, yeah, so music. They can try to yeah. squeeze their way in. Yeah. Um, and even while I was in Lubbock, obviously aware of it, uh, I had been writing songs in high school, but they weren't uh, country. They're still not super country uh, today, even. But like being there and meeting people like and watching people like. You know, William Clark Green and Brandon Adams, uh, just all these other awesome songwriters that come out of Lubbock and that were in Lubbock uh, at the same time I was, started to try to, you know, kind of see like, oh man, there's some really legit things and it's not just straightforward country stuff, um, which is great if you're into that, but if you're not, I think what's cool about the Texas scene is that it's a plethora of different genres and I think it can, I think it's more like, you know, the Texas music can be anything. Uh, like you would, you wouldn't really call Uncle Lucius Texas country, but they, you know, they Definitely found success. Seen, yeah. uh, and you can just kind of go down the whole line like that. Uh -huh. like there's, you can, there's kind of bluesy players, and there's more straightforward country guys, and then there's kind of like progressive country. So I think the coolest thing about it is it's just that yeah, it's kind of eclectic, uh, and that you can sound like anything and and kind of still carve out uh, a piece for yourself. Yeah. And yeah, we were talking about this the other day too, like what's the definition of the Texas music scene? Like of course when you say that originally, or you know, right off the bat you're thinking country, you're thinking, you know, maybe red dirt, throwing that in there. But like, Houston has had some of the best rappers in the game. You got San Antonio, I mean, I'm gonna throw Tejano, but that country scene, like that same feel, it's a total different genre of music. Austin, of course, being weird, you got folk, you got Americana, you got blues all day long. So it's just cool to see that. But um just yeah, I don't even know if it's like separated by region either because uh, I guess DFW would be more rock yeah based. exactly like Dave Bell back in the day man like I mean that was hard that was metal like that and there's still metal you know yeah I know. Well, like, it could tell it's anything yeah I think the cool thing about Dave is you walk around and you see there's not oh yeah now it's definitely I mean, yeah for more so man. I'm thinking 10 years ago though like when it was I don't want to say heyday, but it, when it was, you know, the running paddy wagons down the road and taking yeah. people to jail, well, like, it was yeah. a little bit more. Well, probably like 15 years ago, mm -hmm. honestly. It was really when it was amazing. Maybe so. But it's interesting to see. So, yeah, just like get your perspective on it, man, especially you guys, I mean, y'all play uh, down the Gulf a lot, right? Y'all play in Corpus area? And yeah, Corpus area. Uh, Port Reyes is, for the most part, there, and then, like, a board town called Del Rio, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the best places on Earth. Really? Really cool people. That's fine. And we played uh, across the border there in Cunha too. Nice. Uh, which is right International. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> the, the bar there in Cunha is called the Corona Club and it's the. Um, let's see, what's that? Watch that vampire movie from Dust Till Dawn. Oh, is it, yeah. Isn't Cheech Marin in that? Yeah. Did he get like shotgun blasted? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's right, Sam. I think that's the right movie. Anyways, but that, that movie was uh, filmed in the bar that we played. Nice. And so, like, there's all these uh, shots from uh, when they're shooting the movie there, pictures cool. around it. 
And but back in the day, so before when it was easier to get back across uh, the border really easily, it was college kids would go there for the weekend to get drunk if they weren't 21. Right. Yeah. So uh, if you go look on the wall too, like you know, Cross Canyon Rabbit used to play there, Pat Green used to play there. Uh, like uh, it used to be like one of the places that destination places that all these guys, these Texas guys would would go play just because they would get pretty pretty popping. It's not quite as popular these days. It's yeah. a, little bit, a little bit different situation, but uh, it was a really fun experience though. Yeah, that's really awesome. And yeah, do something like that at least. Yeah, I mean, after spring break down there was pretty wild and getting across the border. 17, 18. Yeah. Oh, uh, and uh, so none of us had, none of us had passports or maybe just Tiago had passports. <laughs> yeah. No, none of us had any passports. Okay, yeah, it was none. And, uh, <laughs> so getting in is not a big yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, the bigger one. They don't ask me any questions uh -huh. on the way in. But on the way out, uh, it was a little bit different. And we've got like this white van and this trailer. And uh, so our trailers, it's an old, it's a work van. And so in the back of our van is just a couch. And then uh, this is, <laughs> there's not seats, it's just a couch just sitting back couch. there. So we pull up and, you know, we're going across the border. And they're like, oh, yeah, passports. And I'm just like, no, no. And he's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? And uh, you are. so like, RJ and Chris, they had like their birth They had like some stuff. Yeah. And then I think Tiago had... I had the least amount, but I figured I was the best off because um, obviously <laughs> an American. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but they didn't really care. So anyways, they had us out. Like you know, they were asking us if we had any drugs or anything. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, sure. Like no, I'm pretty sure we took care of it before we left. <laughs> I don't think we had anything. On it. And uh, so they're like, we're gonna bring the dogs over here. We're like, all right, yeah, that's fine, or, or whatever. And, so they 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 hassled us for probably about 30, 30 minutes, and then you have to go into this other part if you don't have your passport, and like they have to look you up different ways. Um, what was funny is like so Tiago he was in Brazil, and then his family moved here, so he's uh, you know he's like a naturalized citizen or whatever. So when they looked all of us up, uh, they're like, where you uh, where were you born? It was like the first question they asked me. Yeah. Well, we're like, you know, yeah, Texas, America, whatever. Uh -huh. He's like, Brazil, and they're like, oh, well, you're not healthy. You weren't even born here, and you don't have a passport. Like, you know, they're probably thinking there was no way you were going to make it in the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, He's but, probably just super calm, too. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but then they pulled up his naturalization papers and all nice. that stuff, dude. They were really, they were really bad at that stuff, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you just left the papers. Just, yeah. You made their jobs difficult that evening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were kind of told that, it, like, they would, they would give us a lot of grief, but that wouldn't be a big, a big deal, just to, like, Kind of give yourself an extra hour or two because they're trying to try to mess with you a little yeah, bit, especially when you leave your stuff on it. Yeah, so <laughs> it's awesome. I don't know. I still don't have a passport, but I'll go do it again. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's part of the adventure. I'm sure, they forgot about that us by now. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Well, cool, man. Um, well, let's. I mean, let's delve into the uh, the new album a little bit, if you don't mind. Kind of give us a little insight into that. Uh, would you guys record this one? So we recorded this um, at a studio in Denison. It's a studio that I recorded my first album in as well. Uh, and the place there, it's called it's called Bentley Studios. Okay. And uh, yeah, shout out to Bentley. <laughs> my producer, uh, his name is Jesse Jesse Sims, and he kind of runs the studio there. And then, more importantly, sorry Jesse, but we, uh, <laughs> our our engineer slash uh, pretty much made him help me produce this thing as well is uh, Pat Mansky. He was uh, Lloyd Mays kind of right right hand man. Does a lot of engineering work for Lloyd Mays uh, down there in Austin and stuff. And uh, he's worked with a bunch of other great people. And he I mean he saved the record more than a couple. Of really, years. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. With his magician skills <laughs> for sure. Uh, but so yeah, and it, it took a really so I tried to record this album actually like two years ago, um, and we went with a different guy. We we did all the drum tracks, I think, and then we were, I was going to just complete two songs to make sure that everything we were doing was going to be right and I was going to sound the way I wanted to. And we did those two, and I just I, I wasn't going to be able to commit to that. So we actually scrapped the whole project, and then it took me another six months to find Jesse and for him to convince me with Pat and everything. And then uh, while this whole thing was going on, it took like another year from start to finish of the recording process to having it done. And ready to get out there, so it's been a pretty long ride. Yeah. Uh, this album. How many tracks do you have on this one? So there's a there's eleven on that one. 
There's an 11, 11 on the algorithm. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. The reason for that or just... No, actually it was going to be 12. This was going to be 12. And it's funny because the one that didn't make it on was probably going to be the title track, the way I had it planned in my head. <laughs> That's funny. But um, we just, it just wasn't ready yet. Uh, yeah. it, it wasn't quite where I wanted to be. And so instead of trying to force it, uh, we still had 11 other really good songs. And so we just went with that. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, 11 and other only tunes. What's the name of the album? It's a lot of fun. So this is called, uh, the album's called Who I Am. And there's a song, um, Who I Am, on it. Uh, but I, I didn't call it Who I Am because, uh, like everybody, you can't write about stuff you don't know. Or you can, but you still have to put you or yourself in it. But I think this album, like, there's a lot of stuff, like, there's a song about conspiracies, you know, basically. Uh, Called the evil ones. How much time do we have? Right. Yeah. yeah. Probably not enough to get it. It's like, please don't. <laughs> but I, I think everything that's every every song on it is kind of there's something of, about me, uh, or at least like that's pretty closely related to something or who I am or something that I'm interested in, yeah. something that's happened to me, uh, and so it it wound up coming together really nice. And I, I think it's there's a whole bunch of different types of songs on it. I don't. I don't know if there's one cohesive genre that you could put it all in, uh, but it was definitely a lot of fun to make, and I hope people enjoy it. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, if you enjoyed making it, someone's going to enjoy it, and hopefully a lot will, because you know, I've enjoyed the last couple of albums you've done. Anything else? Covers. The covers are crazy, too, man. You get some good stuff. Uh, yeah. I may try to milk one out of you later on, teach you <laughs> something there. But uh, yeah, man, looking forward to that. Um, also, the release uh, of it. So, uh, I think Granada, correct? Are y'all going to do a big... Oh, the Sundown, yeah. The Sundown, sundown sorry, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, our Dallas release, uh, 24th, I want to say? That sounds right. I saw, I think it was going to Friday, 24th. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, the day after Thanksgiving, yeah, that's it. Uh, we're, we're at the Sundown for Granada. Nice. Our buddies, Elmont, who's another Dallas based band, uh, they're playing with us. Uh, if you've never been to the Sundown, it's a really awesome place, really, really cool bar. Uh, and it's nice and small, so we're hoping that we'll be able to, to get it pretty pretty packed and, mm -hmm. and uh, show everybody these these new songs uh, live. Yeah, so get out there the day after Thanksgiving because uh, you're gonna be full of turkey. Full of turkey and tired of hanging out. With and you're gonna want to break away. Exactly. I think <laughs> that's like one of the biggest drinking days, if not the day before. But well, they emailed me uh, like last week, and she was like, "Hey, just double checking. I just realized it's the day after Thanksgiving. Like, do you still want to do it?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." I was like, "We're hoping to like." Packed it. Kind of ride that wave. Yeah. Well, maybe some people being in town or uh, off at work. least being off work. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, I mean, if you're not, it's Friday night anyway. I mean, it's yeah, but like, I always remember not, it's not like the day of Thanksgiving I was trying to stick around more and not. I was, I was done at like 3 p.m. I'm like, yeah, like day okay. Thursday. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm full, you know, Cowboys are losing. I'm about ready right to go and yeah, and to do some drinking somewhere else. Preferably the same new, new music. So that'll be sweet. And hopefully, uh, and, uh, and check out Elmont too. The guys that are playing with us. They just put out an EP about a month ago, and uh, they're really cool too. Um, they're like a progressive rock band. Um, my buddy Johnny sings for them, and they're really awesome too. Cool. So, uh, Elmont. Elmont. Check it out. Cool. Well, I, thanks for hanging with us, man. We could probably talk conspiracies all day long, but I think we'd like to hear some tunes. Yeah, social media yeah. plugs. Yeah, let's stuff. do that. Let's get down with that. Tell us all about your. Yeah, uh, where to find you. So Instagram, Twitter, TRB Tyler Rogers, uh, and then Facebook. Just check out the Tyler Rogers Band Facebook page, or go to TylerRogersBand.com, and that should have links to all of our social media stuff. Uh, you know, of course, music-wise, Spotify, Google Play, all those. It's pretty much everywhere, and yeah, it should be out. Yeah, the twenty-fourth. Twenty-fourth, at least. It. Cool. Well, Tyler, thanks for coming in, man. We're going to try to get some tunes to Let's everybody here, and uh, we'll get back to you with those in a second. Oh, what's up? I'm Tyler Rogers, and this is uh, A Little Too Close. Oh, yeah. 
just trying to save me Oh, but I'm not used to being smart
Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check us out at TexasLocalLive.com for everything else that's going on in our world. Be sure to check us out on all the other social media platforms we have at Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat at Texas Local Live, and we hope to be seeing you around.